the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 15 by eight and a half inch and we're gonna cut at the eight and a half inch mark, producing one eight and a half inch by eight and a half inch square and one six and a half inch high by eight and a half inch wide rectangle. We're then gonna take each piece with the eight and a half inch side forming our top and bottom and fold down about a half an inch on the top of each. This will become the edge of our pocket and we'll run a seam over it in a minute. We're then going to run a straight seam right over that fold. You should lock in the stitch if your machine is capable, but we will have another stitch running on the edge of this to keep it secure. You'll then do the exact same thing to your shorter portion, running a straight stitch right along the piece that you folded. You'll then take the two eight and a half inch wide raw edges and place them right side together lined up. The tops will not be lined up. You'll then run a straight locked in seam along this edge. This will form the seam at the bottom of your mask. Moving back to your ironing board, open up the fabric and iron the seam at the bottom flat. You'll then wanna take the short edge and right side out, fold it out and repress your seam to give you a sharp bottom. Then take the top and fold it down approximately one inch so that it overlaps slightly with the shorter fabric and iron this in place as well. You'll then open up the fabric and on the right side of the fabric, just below that um, edge you've now ironed, you'll wanna place the first piece of your elastic, pinning it in place. You want the elastic to arch towards the inside of the mask. When you sew this, the elastic will then be on the outside. So again, we're pinning to the top and bottom, right below the creases we've just ironed, with the elastic arching towards the center of the mask on the correct side of the fabric. With your pins in place, you'll then fold the mask up in reverse, so your right sides together, placing the top flap over the bottom. You'll wanna make sure you have that overlap and you can pin it down to make it easier to sew and then repress with your iron before you stitch the sides. With the wrong side of our fabric now showing, we'll want to run a stitch up each side of the mask. This will not only secure the sides together, it will also hold your elastic in place. Rather than reversing over the elastic here, what you're going to see us do is actually turn around the fabric and run the entire stitch a second time in reverse, just to ensure that elastic is well secured. We'll then switch to the other side and repeat the process. Running the seam once, turning the fabric around and running it a second time so the elastic is well captured underneath the seam.
If you have a large seam allowance, anything over about 3 eighths of an inch, you may want to clip just the corners of your fabric to make it easier to turn it flat, to iron it flat when you turn it right side out. You'll then begin the process of turning the fabric right side out using your filter pocket as the place that you're turning it from. As you make this flip, make sure you're slowly pulling out all of the pins first so you don't accidentally poke yourself with them. You'll see that our elastic is now well secured to either side and on the outside of the mask as your loops. Moving back to your ironing board, you can sharpen those sides by running the iron over them one more time. To ensure the top of the mask holds its shape, we're going to run a quick seam just along the very top edge, leaving only about a quarter of an inch or less between the seam we're running and the top of the mask. You'll then slide the pipe cleaner right up against that seam in the top flap of the interior of the mask and then run about a two inch stitch in the center of the mask to hold the pipe cleaner in place. This will leave enough free space on either side for you to slide out the pipe cleaner when you wash the mask. With the pipe cleaner in place, we're now gonna flip our mask back to where the front is facing up and create three folds that go towards the bottom. I found this is easiest to do starting at the bottom of the mask, so you can hold your previous folds in place as you create the others. In total, you want your mask to be about three and a half inches high at this point. And you also wanna make sure one of your pleats does not fall right at that filter pocketing opening, because that can make it tough to go through your machine. Once you have your pleats in place, you can use an iron to sharpen them and make it easier to sew. Some people may also choose to pin the pleats at this point. That's not entirely necessary if you get a sharp edge with the iron. Then flip your mask over to the back and just re-iron. Again, this will help keep it in place when you run it through the machine. We're then going to run a straight stitch up either side of the mask, securing the pleats in place. You can either reverse over the pleats as you do them to make them stronger, or as we did here, run down one side of the mask, turn the mask over, and put a second seam going in the opposite direction, again just to strengthen those pleats and make sure nothing comes apart as someone's wearing the mask. We'll then flip to the other side and repeat the process so the pleats are held in place on each side of the mask. This is what the resulting mask will look like from the front. You'll see only one color of fabric with pleats that fold towards the bottom, elastic ear loops off either side, and a pipe cleaner that runs across the top. On the back of the mask, we'll see two different fabrics. We'll have that hole for the filter to go in, and our pleats on the back of the mask will fold upwards. 
If you're concerned the user may not be able to easily identify the back of the mask or it may be hard to do so quickly, you can also use a permanent marker to add the word back to the mask or use iron-on vinyl to identify which side is the back. Our filters are cut to 4x6, which will be slightly larger than the mask when fully folded up. However, this is designed so that the filter covers the full nose and mouth when the mask is expanded to get a good fit.